A lot of people have noticed in my videos that I hold a pencil wrong. Mrs. Hawk, my second grade teacher, noticed this too. Not in my videos, but in, in real life she noticed. And a lot of people will tell you there is a right way to hold a pencil, but is there really? That's what we're gonna be talking about today. I'd like to thank today's sponsor, who is, it's me, I'm the sponsor again. If you're looking to learn some design or illustration software, I have some discount codes for some of my courses located down below in the description. Don't pay full price, people. Anyway, onto the video. The most common grip, the one you were probably taught in school, is the tripod grip. And I had my crack graphics team put together a montage of how it works. The proper way to hold a pencil. Place the pencil between your index finger and your thumb. Use your middle finger to support the index finger and the pencil. Make Make sure you hold the pencil close to the tip. Congratulations, you can now properly hold a pencil and you are smarter than a tree sloth. And that's how most people, wait, did he call me a tree sloth? Just because that's how most of us have been taught how to hold a pencil doesn't mean it is the only way or even the best way to hold a pencil. This technique that is taught in schools is primarily for handwriting, but when we're talking about art, illustration, drawing, it's a good idea to learn some of the other techniques that are out there. And let me tell you, there are a lot of techniques. There's the four finger version of the tripod, the quadrupod. Then there's the lateral tripod, the lateral quadrupod, the overhand, the underhand, the brush grip, the dog shadow puppet hold, whatever the heck this is. And that's just talking about hands. We haven't even touched your feet yet. Ew. I'm not suggesting you go around touching people's feet. It was a figure of speech. Ultimately, your goal is to create something. So however you need to get there to accomplish what you're trying to accomplish, becomes the right way. The right way is the way that gives you the results you're looking for. And since each grip is a little bit different and can be used for different methods, I've had my crack team of designers put together this chart to explain when to use which grip and when. Okay, this is confusing. Who, who put this together? Hello. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna have to do this the old fashioned way. We're gonna have to talk about doing it underhand. Yes. No, that's the name of the grip. It's the underhand grip. Oh. Okay. I do not trust that, man. The underhanded grip is widely used when you want to keep your wrist steady and not use your fingers for drawing. It encourages the use of your entire arm. It also gives you quick access to the side of the pencil for shading and more varied strokes. You pinch the pencil with your index finger and your thumb, and then you rest your other fingers along the side of the pencil and you flip your hand over. Drawing like this forces you not to rely too heavily on your fingers and your wrist to make marks. When you use your fingers, you have a very small range of motion, which is great for drawing letter forms and writing. Your wrist is gonna provide you with an even wider range of movement. Your elbow gives you an even wider range of movement and your shoulder can take you anywhere in the world. Vacation? Or the page, just the page, actually. The smaller the circumference that you're drawing in using your fingers, your wrist, your elbow is also going to add a natural arc to any strokes that you put down on the page, especially as those strokes start to get a little bit longer. If you want straighter strokes, try using more of your arm. If you can't get a straight stroke using just your fingers, try going up to your wrist. If you can't get the straightest stroke you want going from your wrist, try using your elbow. If the stroke is still too long and you're getting too much curve to it, then you move up to your shoulder. And when you hold a pencil, don't just think about holding it with your hand. Think about your whole arm as the tool that you're using to draw with. Your hand is just the end of that tool. There's some other grip variations that you might want to try out as well. For example, there's the brush grip. This gives you some of the same control that you get from the tripod grip, but because your position is so far back on the brush or the pencil, you have a much wider range of motion and also less precision. And if you're looking to do a lot of shading, try placing your index finger on the tip of the pencil. This is another grip you're gonna find illustrators using a lot. What about the shadow dog puppet grip? That one was a joke, but if you can get it to work, you know, give it a shot. Time for a pop quiz. Are you guys ready for this? If you want a long straight line, what part of your body should you be drawing with? A, your fingers, B, your wrist, C, your elbow, or D, your shoulder? Anyone? Anything? It's, it's your shoulder. You should be drawing with your shoulder. I don't like it. You don't like what? I don't like drawing like this. It doesn't feel right. Fair enough. The first time you use a grip like this, it's going to be weird. You're reprogramming years of drawing and writing habits. It's, it's gonna take some practice and it's gonna take some time. So let's go over some things you can practice to get better at this stuff. First, start off by drawing a straight line. Draw it as straight as you can. Keep your wrist tight and make sure that you're using your whole arm. Feel free to fill the entire page with lines. You can actually fit a lot of lines on a page. And also, those lines don't have to look good. Heck, it, it shouldn't look good the first time you try this. Another thing you can do is you can draw a line with a ruler and then try as hard as you can in one steady stroke to draw on top of that line and try to replicate 
that straight line. If you stop and you think about it, your line is gonna get wobbly and you're gonna go above it and you're gonna go below it. And when you start doing this, your line isn't gonna stop exactly where you expect it to stop. It's gonna overshoot or go up and down a little bit, but what we're looking for are straight, confident lines. As you become more comfortable doing this, let's try to create more control with those strokes. Draw a dot for your starting point and another one for your end point. Then try to connect those dots with as straight a line as possible. Something that really helps me is trying to visualize that line before I actually put my pencil down on a piece of paper. Some people call this the ghosting method, where you ghost out the line before you actually draw it. After you've practiced that line two or three times, go ahead and just lay it down on the paper. Don't expect to master any of these in one day. These are great warm-up practice lessons. Before you start drawing anything, just fill up a page with some lines. Just practice this stuff and get used to it. And don't be afraid to try different grips based on what you're trying to accomplish. Check out some of my other art videos. I'm gonna link them up here. And as always, if you have any comments or questions, let me know down below in the comment section. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in a couple of days.